Alright. <laughs> All right, so I'm about to start to start doing these reviews on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Try to keep it up from episode one all the way to the reunion. So, um, and I'm gonna try to review Empire and probably just those two. Right now, nah, try to keep Empire and Love and Hip Hop. So this video gonna be different because I'm not gonna edit it at all. So I'm just gonna film it and then post it. So, all right. So Love and Hip Hop Atlanta episode one. So we start off with Jocelyn at her photo shoot and um, her pregnancy photo shoot and she had like flowers on her and like uh, she was inside of a pool and she was talking about how um, Stevie has been there with her while she's been pregnant. She only saw him one time and she's six months pregnant um, and people keep saying all these different people is her baby daddy but she knows Stevie. So she basically been going through her pregnancy alone. Then we go to Stevie, who's working out inside of a gym, a boxing gym, it looked like. And we get our first scripted scene of this season because he was served some papers, which um, I do believe that actually happened, but I don't believe it happened at that moment. You mean to tell me you just so happened to get served the papers right when they started filming? No. He probably got served the papers a while ago, and they just said, here, have some random person hand him these papers and act like you served it to him right now. Basically, Jocelyn about to put him on child support because she have, he haven't been there even before the baby had been born. So, that that's what went on first. Then we go to Young Jock and Carly Red. Um, Young Jock was at like a farm or something and Carly Red was there with <laughs> heels on. I don't understand that. But, Basically, they've been talking or whatever. They're not really in a relationship or nothing. they just talking. Um, and they come up with this stupid little bet. I didn't really understand it, to be honest. Um, basically, Young Jock is trying to smash Carly. And Carly want to smash Young Jock, too. But Carly trying to play hard to get. So she's like, if you apologize, then we can sleep together. And Young Jock's like, I'm not apologizing to you, Carly. And so, apparently Carly came up with some stupid bet to where if Jock apologized to her first, he got to pose for her book, Naked, something like that, her sex book. And if she apologized to Jock first, then she has to clean up the farm and wear nothing but bra and panties. That's a stupid bet if you ask me because if they both trying to smash, why don't they just do it and get it over with? Then we go see pretty much the rest of the cast, all the girls that get along. We see Car. well, I don't think Carly was there, but we see Rashida, Arian, Mimi, um, Tammy, and we meet this new girl, Melissa. Um, she cute. Uh, she supposed to be the stud of the season. Um... We had Chris last season. Every single Love Hip Hop gotta have a gay girl, a stud or something. So on Hollywood, they got, um, who they got on Hollywood? Oh, on Hollywood, they got Miss Nikki, baby. And on New York, they got Snoop from The Wire. Uh, so, <laughs> and now Atlanta, they got uh, Melissa. And I like Melissa. She seemed pretty cool, if you ask me. So, basically, Melissa know all the girls except Tammy. Um, she been friends with all the rest of them for all this time, but I didn't understand how she know she know Jocelyn, but we ain't never seen Joss hurt on the show, cause Jocelyn don't got that many friends, so I feel like we see them all throughout the show, but we never seen Melissa, so that was kind of confusing to me. Basically, Rashida said that they was going over everybody's relationships. Rashida said her and Kirk have ups and downs. Tammy said she not with Walker cause of infidelity. Um. Mimi say that her and Stevie is good, they co-parenting. And then Tammy asked, Joc asked Mimi about Jocelyn. I didn't understand that. They automatically start talking about Jocelyn, as they always do. Mimi told all the rest of the girls that um, Melissa is friends with Jocelyn. And Tammy got defensive and was like, I really liked you. But she might have been just playing. She was like, I really liked you. And now I don't. And Melissa's like, so you can't like me because I'm friends with blah, blah, blah. And... I find it funny that Deb is not cool, but she alright with Jocelyn, but Tammy still don't like her. That's kind of funny because 
Tammy originally didn't like Jocelyn because Jocelyn had a problem with Deb, so that's weird. But anyway, I like Melissa a lot because she was saying, like, um, I can be friends with Mimi and Jocelyn, but when I'm with Mimi, I don't talk about Jocelyn, and when I'm with Jocelyn, I don't talk about Mimi. I like that, and Mimi said she cool with that. And that's how I am, so I like that. But they kind of was talking about Jocelyn, but they wasn't saying nothing really that bad, but uh, they was talking about Jocelyn. And she was surrounded by a whole bunch of people that don't like Jocelyn. Um, what happened next? Oh, then me, uh, Melissa started talking about Jocelyn's masquerade party. So, uh, Arian has said, you're the only one that's going. Um, which is true, so I don't even know why they're still talking about Jocelyn. Then we go to Tommy. If y'all remember her from last season, she came back. And she's still in trouble with the law. And I found it funny that, well, not funny, but interesting that she said she was a mom. She got two daughters. And she always in trouble with the law. She got like 32 mug shots. Like, uh, I was surprised to hear that, for real. Basically, Tommy meet up with Stevie. She tells Stevie about all the trouble she going through with the law because of Jocelyn, which I found kind of funny. Like, I wouldn't expect Jocelyn to be the type to get the law involved in that type of stuff like Tammy Tommy said why couldn't she just keep it in the streets I agree well not necessarily agree but I just thought Jocelyn would do that I don't necessarily agree with Tommy but I just thought Jocelyn would and it was kind of funny because Tommy was like if you pregnant I'll wait <laughs> um basically Tommy asked Stevie to go to court with her so that uh, so he can help her or something like that and Stevie said, all right. And then Stevie told Tommy about the problems he having with Jocelyn, which I kind of thought, uh, I don't know. Like, you going on Tommy's side. But then he said she family, but she not really family. They all know. It's weird. I, I just would think Stevie J wouldn't get involved in this, but whatever. Then Stevie tried to compare their situation, saying, yeah, my situation with Jocelyn is kind of like your situation with her. Um, she doing this with me and she doing that with you and I'm just like, y'all situation is completely different. Um, alright, but then we go to Jocelyn's masquerade party. It looked real fun. Um, everybody, it looked like there was a lot of people there, but not a lot of people from Love & Hip Hop. Um, I, I kind of find it funny that Young Jock is always, like, what is he, he served no purpose on the show, really, but he, he a funny guy, but what, like, why was he at Jocelyn's masquerade party? I don't ever remember seeing Jocelyn and Young Jock in the scene together. They probably have been, I just can't remember, but I found it weird. And I also found it weird that Kirk was coming to the party. What, how is Kirk coming to Jocelyn's party to support Jocelyn, because he did say that. But Kirk's wife don't get along with Jocelyn. But then again, she don't really not get along with Jocelyn. They ain't never really... I don't know. It's weird. It's weird to me that they go into her party. Anyway. Then she, Jocelyn brings up um, Young Dro, who she been friends with and working with, I guess. And they play a single that they got coming out. Apparently, it was a surprise. And Jocelyn also said that... Um, Something interesting. She said, no matter who it is in the industry, if she take a picture with them and put it on social media, everybody's saying that might be her baby daddy, which I do think is true, which unfortunately because, sorry, but that's true. Then Carly Rae, we see her sneaking in through the curtains with a mask on. <laughs> oh, my gosh. She, Carly Rae tried to stay in everybody's storyline but her own. But I like Carly Rae, though, still. Because she brings, she fun in the show. But anyway, Carly... Melissa, another scripted scene of this show. Carly and Melissa just so happened to meet up. And Melissa's like, is that you, Carly? Is that you? Like, Carly's like, oh, get away from me. I'm, I'm undercover. I'm not here for Jocelyn. And Melissa, I, this is why I like her again. She's like, could you please just leave? You and Jocelyn don't get along. And Carly's like, no, nah, I'm here for Jock. I just came to spy on him. And look, he over there with some little thought. So they go over to Jock. And Jock was not surprised to see her. Because he told her where she he was going to be and what time. And apparently he was over there with some girl named Jasmine. So he started talking, or Carly started questioning Jasmine. Well, I think she said, I'm not worried about you. I don't got a problem with you. I don't got a problem with him. 
So then she asked about that. Young Jock said, this ain't my girl. I didn't come here with her. I came here by myself. I just ran into a friend and I just started talking to her. So, you know, that's that seemed like a real scene. But this seemed like a fake scene. Just so happened, all of a sudden, now Jasmine want to say, um, well, first of all, Young Jock said that this is Rob. Rob, Rod, Rod, I think his name is Rodney. This is Rodney's baby or girlfriend. And she was like, oh, Rodney is Mimi's ex for before Stevie, a way long ago ex, who is like bad news. He He's like a bad guy. He in the jail. Script this scene right here. Young Jock said, congratulations on your baby, by the way. And then tried to continue conversation. So you mean tell me out of nowhere you just... Wanted to say congratulations on your baby right when Carly Red and Melissa walked up. No, fake scene. So then, basically they said, oh, you had a baby. Carly Red started questioning the baby, saying, oh, so you had it while Rod was locked up. And then she's like, oh, it's not Rod's baby. It's not Rod's baby. It's Kirk's. They're like, Kirk who? Kirk who? Kirk Frost. And then everybody <laughs> looking like, what? This was pretty crazy, but like, the thing about this scene that wasn't that exciting, but it was, but it wasn't, is because we already know how this play out, because it's been all over the vlogs, or vlogs, all over the news, all over TMZ, everywhere. So, everybody know how this plays out, so it's weird. But anyway, um, Carly Rae started tripping out, basically. Young Jock is trying to get her to stop, like, no, 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 this... This is bad news. Don't talk about this right now. You, But Young Jocks did seem genuinely like he didn't know. He seemed like he did not know what was going on. Um, no. Alright, so. Um, I kind of feel bad for Jock. Because he did seem kind of like he didn't know what was going on. And it kind of hit him by surprise. And Carly was all over Jock saying, now you know you friends with, um, oh, after, um, the girl had walked away, um, what's her name? Jasmine walked away. So Kirk, uh, Carly was like, you know you friends with Rashida, you know you friends with Kirk for years, why would you be associating with her? And young Jock's like, I did, really did not know, I did not know. And I feel like Jock really was friends with, uh, Rashida and Kirk for years, so... But then again, even if he did know, he probably wasn't going to say nothing. That, I don't know. It, it, that's a sticky situation. Anyway, Kirk comes in. Kirk goes over to them. Young Jock trying to tell Kirk what's going on. Carly's all over like, no, no, no. And then Carly's like, Jock is the king of shade. And then Jock got all defensive with Carly. Like, no, dude, watch your mouth, watch your mouth. And then I like Melissa. Melissa was like, why you got to be so um, harsh with her or so hard on her? And he like, I'm not being harsh. She like, oh, no, no, no. And Melissa take Carly and they go away. Um, The girl walks back up. Jock saying he don't know her. It was so obvious that he did know her. He started to sweat and he started doing his little half smile. When he do that, that means he, he lying. So, and the girl was obviously drunk at this point. Jasmine, she was drunk. <laughs> she was drunk. And she said that Kirk was there at the hospital when the baby boy was born. And Kirk been paying her since the baby been born. So, he been supporting and everything like that. So, all of this came out. I do think it was real. I think it was real how this came out. But I think it was, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's weird. Um... Then, yeah. Kirk and Jasmine got into it. Kirk tried to, oh, Kirk tried to flip the script and say, you know I'm married, so what would you have doing, what would you be doing sleeping with me? And she's like, oh, don't try to flip the script. You know you're married, so what would you be doing sleeping with me? And I like that, that was funny, but Kirk basically left. He was like, whatever, I'm leaving. I was gonna do this, but I gotta go. And I don't know why he was there in the first place, like I said, what is Kirk? Kirk friends with Jocelyn. Like, he came to support Jocelyn. It's so weird. I wish, like, the relationships on this show was more defined. Like, I don't understand. Kirk left. Um, Melissa and Carly went to go meet up with... What's her name? Mimi. At, at Melissa's bar. And Mimi was like, shut up, shut up, shut up. She didn't believe this. And they told, like, it was a part of her ex. 
he is her ex's girlfriend. Um, Jasmine is her is Rodney's girlfriend. And Mimi at first was like, nah, you know, he shady. He did this and this and that, and he made me go to jail. He took money from me, so it could be shady. But then as they went on, Mimi was like, okay, because if, if somebody is saying that this is your baby and you know it's not, you're going to be mad and cussing them out. So Mimi understood, and Mimi was like, yeah, this is fishy. I'm surprised Carly didn't call Rashida, though. I really am. So basically, we get to Kurt going home. And apparently, um, Kirk was able to get to Rashida quick because she was at some apartment, at the Buckhead apartment instead of the real house, because he wouldn't have made it to the house on time. He comes inside the house, <laughs> Rashida was like, you home quick? Because she knew where he was going, so she probably expected him to be gone for a couple hours. He came home, and she's like, what's wrong? He started telling her what's going on. And she's looking crazy, like, what, what? I can tell this was a real scene, too. This was the first time she heard about this. By the way, Rashida, she looked the best she ever looked this season. I don't know what she did. I don't know if it's because she just had the baby. Well, she didn't have the baby for a while now, but she looked the best she ever looked. So Kirk looks stupid for cheating on her. Anyway. Kirk was so obviously lying to Rashida. It was so obvious. He was sweating, wiping his sweat off. He took his jacket off. He was talking quiet, mumbling over words. She was like, what's your name? And he's like, mm, I don't know, something Jasmine. Like, that was that should have been the key that he knew her and everything. But whatever. Rashida said, if, if you're saying it's not yours, you never slept with her, then all right. You're not the father. Simple as that. End of discussion. What do you do? People people claim stuff on celebrities all the time. Well, not that Kirk is a celebrity. But anyway, that happened all the time. So Rashida wasn't worried about it. But then she said, but if it is your baby, you got a problem. We got a problem. And that's the end of that. So this is probably going to be the most interesting storyline on this season. Then we go to Tommy. Tommy and Stevie go into the wherever they went and basically Stevie thought that he was about to help her not go to jail or whatever defend her and he came out he was like soon as we got there they put her in cuffs and left and then we saw her she was in cuffs she's still posing and stuff you know she used to this and she's like yeah they just basically said did you threaten to shoot her we have video evidence lock her up and they locked her up and she went right back to jail and I think this is about to be her 33rd mugshot and she said she about to do what she always do which is just bail out and help well basically she about to do what she always do bail out she said some other stuff but she really i'm sorry but when you got 33 mugshots it's it's hard for me to believe that you're gonna turn your life around and then we get to the end basically jocelyn meet up with stevie for the first time since the last time she seen him which i don't know when that was because she seen she said she's seen him once since she's been pregnant I don't know if she was talking about the reunion or not. So she seen something for the first time in a long time and seen. So it went off at that point. So uh, I guess next week is going to pick up with their conversation. Um, and then we see all what's to come in this season. Um, the main thing I'm looking forward to seeing is the Frost, um, Rashida, and Kirk storyline. So. Um, but that's it for this review. Um, I'm about to keep. I'm about to. I'm gonna try to review Empire on Wednesday. It'll probably be up on Thursday, and I'm gonna try to keep reviewing Love and Hip Hop Atlanta every single episode. So be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share this video on all four social media. Until next time, peace.